So uh, to start with, I would love to welcome my co-founder and CEO of Gravity Sketch, Shay Sosania, and I would love to welcome Dan um, Cockning, our head of community. So Dan and Shay, uh, welcome. Thanks for having us. This has been great so far. I really have enjoyed everything. And, uh, massive, massive shout out to the team that's running everything behind the scenes. Um, they have a little bunker in the back, the, com the command center. And uh, they've been working until like really late night here in London. So yeah, like huge, huge shout out to them. That's where that's where Dan is sitting at. Absolutely. Surrounded by a lot of snacks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you guys have done All a right. great, great job. This has been super fun. Um, let me just get the keynote up. So yeah, Shay is going to be sharing his screen. So before we get started with, with the keynote, I would love to... I would love to just mention that this is a session for you guys. You are our community. We are here to speak with you, to hear from you. So please let us know that you're here, where you're joining from. If you have questions, if you have comments, we are here, all ears, all eyes. Um, so please manifest in the chat. Um, all right, so we can get we can get started. Next, um, yeah, next slide. So over the past two years, we have been we have been listening to experts from different fields in how they're developing their design process, how they're having a different approach to their process to really disrupt what they're doing. Uh, we're living in a very lucky uh, moment. We're witnessing transformation. We're seeing a systematic change that is redefining how we approach design, and that's something that you know we should all be very thankful of. So next slide. We're moving into an era of systems, data-informed, and user-centric design. So creating products is about deeply understanding our users. One of the reasons why, as creatives, now we're starting to have a bigger voice at the table, something that we've never seen before. Um, so definitely should take advantage of that. But that also means that now, uh, with the products that we're making, the advancements in technologies, now we are having to become experts at everything, having to go deeper into the knowledge of different fields and also be able to speak with people from different fields, like um, you know, engineers, psychologists, uh, data scientists, you name it. Um, there is not only like a shift happening in how, like in the products that we're designing that are becoming a little bit different, more technological, but also we're moving into a, a shift in how the design culture that we're living in is changing. Now we're becoming more experimental, we're welcoming experimentation, failure, iteration, we're getting to know our users way more and working with them to create the products. Our toolbox is also changing. This is why we're also here today. As technology advances, our tools uh, do as well. So, you know, what is it that we're now bringing into the table, into our tool set to help us elevate our practice? Um, we can now uh, visualize something really quickly in real space with the help of spatial technology. We can quickly visualize thousands of ideas with the help of AI. Tools are advancing so quickly that now we're able to start training them to imitate certain styles. Um, so, and our tools are also becoming democratic. They're giving everyone that needs to have a say to actually be able to express themselves. So not only designers, but everyone that has to be working in the design process. Our practice has moved from isolation to collaboration and collaboration even across the globe. So collaborate to create products that are not only visually appealing, but functionally superior, empathetic, respectful of diversity, respectful of the environment. And so for all of this, next slide, for all of this, we think that communication is key and that we speak the same language is key. And we see the same language being 3D. So over to you, Shay. Thanks, Daniela. Um, these past two days have been amazing. And just the way that folks are using all the different tools in their tools chest to communicate an idea that has yet to reach reality is it's, it's mind blowing. And I imagine if we fast forward 10 years from now, there's going to be a whole new suite of tools, a whole new suite of processes. And I, I, I certainly hope that we can continue to have such an amazing event. But yeah, this is having a real impact. Like the work that we're seeing in this very short period of time with AI emerging, 3D technologies becoming more accessible, it's having a, a real impact on the market. Um, 
I'm going to start with a, a very fun and exciting example here where we're seeing the entertainment industry drastically change. Where concept artists who are used to working with static images, they're now building 3D sets that could translate really seamlessly into the actual production. Um, so we worked with a art director. Well, he worked with the tool essentially uh, on Avatar The Way of the Water, and it was just incredible to see what they were able to construct in 3D at the concept level, not necessarily at the production level, and then take that all the way through. And that also extends to our gaming environments. Um, this is an amazing, fun VR game, Walkabout Mini Golf. And a lot of the levels were designed using 3D in VR from the onset. Gravity Sketch, Blender, um, bringing these things together, and then playing in the experience before even de developing the game itself. And so if you, if you have a chance, download it and play. It's really fun. But I could see how the creators were actually thinking about the experience at scale during that creation process. And of course, you could see the industry changing when it comes to how we produce and how we consume our products. And Zillafeld is a great example of this, where the design, the digital design is then going into a digital fabrication center or a farm is what, what they'd like to call it. And many of the designers like Finrush Taylor are designing in 3D from the onset, and they hadn't had any kind of traditional historic ways of working in 2D. They've really just grappled, grappled onto the 3D way of working and taken it all the way forward. And um, we're seeing have an impact in sports. This is a really uh, amazing story here. The, the RS-15 was played by the athletes that won the World Cup. And you know the design was ideated, concepted, and brought really far in the process in Gravity Sketch in a 3D environment. And we have uh, our first chair that was made start to finish in, in the platform. And we heard from Nick earlier in, in, in was it yesterday, I believe? And, you know, this is so cool. You could walk into a furniture store and buy a piece of furniture that someone was able to ideate, iterate in 3D from the onset, as opposed to just a sketch and then try to bring it into 3D and kind of fumble about with the communication. And I think we'll see products more like this in the future where the creator was really able to translate their ideas so clearly into the 3D space that they can even get, uh, I think, a bit more excited and uh, imaginative with the output. OK, so why is all this important to us? Well, we're designers, Danielle and myself, uh, starting the business some time ago. And we have a lot of designers on the team now. And we understand the pains of going through the process of thinking of something in 3D, going straight to 2D, and then trying to bring it back into 3D into the minds of others. And our world is 3D. Everything that we consume is 3D, all of our products. Uh, potentially, we can argue that you know our, our, our applications and so forth are all screen-based, 2D-based. That's, that's fine, but you're holding a 3D object. And when you're using those applications, where are you? In a 3D environment. In that 3D environment, someone sketched it, someone drew it. And that's our thesis, right? Like everything in our built environment has been drawn and many of the things in our digital environment. It started with a sketch. And if we work with that principle, how do we take that sketch and bring it forward? But what's going on with the sketch? Well, for many, many years, humans have been trying to represent uh, 3D ideas in 2D mediums um, from the cave painting in France to the hieroglyphics. And it wasn't really until the 1400s that we started to bring in perspective. And perspective kind of took it to the next dimension. And this is what we've been working on for a very long time. But if you think about it, it's a very sn small snapshot in time in terms of how long we've been using this method of communication, this specific method of using perspective. Uh, but the tools that we use for, for, for communicating in 2D are amazing, right? Like I think it's the most fantastic interface. You have a piece of paper and a pen. It's mobile. It can go anywhere. You could write on, pa you could write on paper, walls. Uh, anywhere you want, really. And you can bring anything to it, right? You could bring different different markers or even just put a bit of ink on your finger and start smudging things around. So this interface is something that is really magical to us. And I don't think this will ever go away. But there is a way to bring something to it or at least bring a component that helps build on top of this so we can spend uh, more time communicating in the, the true way that we want to experience the products. So let's talk about this from a maybe a, a storybook perspective. When a designer has an idea, the first thing they do is imagine that idea. They might dream on it. They might walk around. They try to facilitate it in their minds. Then they have to bring it to paper. That's the first way of getting it out of their heads. And then when they show it to someone else, maybe this is a fabricator on the right or someone that has to work with them to, to market it or bring it to, to, to life, they're thinking of something else. You can see here a chair and a stool. And that's because 
we're all doing this computational um, exercise in our brain, right? We're trying to figure out perspective, convexity, concavity, and that's not a very straightforward thing. This is just lines on a 2D screen, and this is a, a single point of view. This is not a stereoscopic vision. So it's quite hard for us to see the same thing from our from each of our vantage points, especially if we only have one image or a, a, maybe two or three images to go from. So it would be fantastic if the creator could just reach in their brain and pull that idea right in front of them and then validate that idea. Say, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. But not only that, but also share with the other person, hey, this is exactly what I want. Hey, that is essentially the vision that we all imagined when we wanted to start this business and, and bring this, bring this uh, tool to life and bring the platform to life. But we weren't the ones that uh, thought about 3D, 3D sketching in space as the first point, right? Like uh, this is a, a great image of Pablo Picasso. And with the technology of the time, he was able to represent his ideas spatially. Now it wasn't in real time. Now it was the, that was the hard thing. Um, but it, I think all creators have, are, have, have at one point in their lives thought about this. Like, how do I just draw this thing in real life? And I can see it in design reviews and sessions where, you know, designer will use their hands initially to, to shape up an idea or share a direction and then they'll go to the whiteboard and maybe sketch something on the whiteboard and then finally when it gets to the piece of foam they can carve it out um so lots of credit where credit's due to the creators that came far before us that were thinking about this and trying to push themselves as far as possible to bring this 3d sketching experience to life and this this really clear way of communicating their ideas three-dimensionally so with the technology today we're able to make that a reality and we feel responsible actually um we we were pushing for this in our our research as master students before building the business. And when we started to see the market leaning in and the technology coming forward, we said, okay, we have to, we have to be the ones to bring it forward. And so the, the key impetus was not like, let's make a great software for this piece of technology, but like, how do we help design teams better bring, like, bring better products to life? And, you know, the flip side is that there's a series of compromised products that are out there in the market. And I'm sure all of you who have been working on products and designing products know that, you know, the timeline runs out and unfortunately you got to kind of go with what you got and so if we can bring more of your communication earlier in the process in 3d our our assumption is that you're going to make just really great products and you're going to work in a in a much more fluid fa fashion with your team so the thing that you have to do the most as a designer is communicate and you use creation as your communication method and so we look at this as the t-shape that defines our business Communication across the top, go as broad as you can. So can I communicate for, from the beginning of my process to the end of my process? And can I use the creation for the depth? How deep can I go in my creative tool set? And that's the way we're structuring our business. So if we look at forward or just kind of looking at a snapshot of what we're trying to do as a business, we're trying to build like a really reliable invite flow, multi-platform experience in the communication side, um, you know, having like great camera perspectives and views. You got the viewpoints and screen creation. And then eventually in the future, who knows, version control, notifications, things like this. But as you go deep, first and foremost, great authoring tools, being able to edit your content. That's I've heard over and over again, people love that this just has infinite editing possibilities, but also bringing stuff in, ingesting stuff into the platform so you can use all types of tools that you're creating with. And then finally, you kind of get into that precision workflow and really start to bring this to fruition. Now, we haven't completed this vision, but we're, we're well on our way. And through your support, we've been actually building in the right way or at least at the right time because if we try to do this all at once probably wouldn't have a viable business today so how are we building our platform what's our philosophy what's our approach uh, this might be a bit of a replay for those of you that joined last year but i, I want to go into a little bit of depth and a couple of points here so bear with me first we had a product uh design principles like that was like the critical thing before we actually built anything so through observing how creators work in the real world, like the physical world, and we went to lots of workshops and design studios, architecture studios, things that were immediate had direct results and direct feedback. Things that were physical seemed to have joy and pleasant. It was a pleasant experience for the creators. And then things that had a simple set of rules allowed creative people and non-creative people to get into a creative mindset much faster. So these were the core pillars to how we built Gravity Sketch. And you might notice some of that in our in our um, interface and in our user experience. We also had this approach from a UX perspective, like let's not throw everything in your face at the beginning. Now, a lot of tools do that and it's fine if that's how your brain is wired, where you can look at a almost like a, a 
an airplane cockpit and you can kind of click on all these different knobs and you know what everything does. But we kind of really wanted to make the creation experience first and foremost and make that fun. So my eight-year-old niece to my 86-year-old grandma, I put them both in Gravity Sketch and they both drew a flower. First thing, right? Without thinking, so I, no, no second guessing. Now they didn't get to editing, but they did get to colors and they did get to um, moving around and, and grabbing things. And so that really exists at the top level of our UX funnel. And as you go down, you get to the more prescriptive tools. And so how do we continue to build our product where it kind of opens up to you as you go deeper into the experience? And this should also extend to all the collaborators and other communication methods that you might be using with Gravity Sketch versus like maybe the screen or VR or so forth. So just wanted to give you guys a, a kind of a snapshot to how we're looking at product development and how we're looking at having a, a long lasting impact with, with where we take the product. Um, now these tools are all great. This, these are tools that do specific tasks and we don't necessarily think of ourselves as that. We are a tool, but there's tools that do specific tasks in our ecosystem and we think this makes the, the right alignment. I'm, I'm super happy to have this debate in the chat as well and, and maybe after in the conversation, but this is kind of how we see those tools that you use in your, your daily basis. They're great for the one task. You can't live without them, um, but they are good for that one task. And so maybe, you know, us, we're a tool that does a specialized task, but I'm not sure that that really fits with us either. Um, there are tools that do really specialized tasks and they're amazing as well. And I love them and I use them all the time. Um, but potentially we're like this tool, right? A multi-tool where you can kind of do little bits of everything. Um, but I, th I think there's a lot of things you can't do in our platform and we probably never will be able to join our platform. And so we kind of got to give that title to, to a tool like Blender where you can just about do anything in the tool. Um, but potentially where this kind of um, work wall slash shelf where you can just put stuff up and, and view things. And yeah, that's, 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 definitely possible, um, but it's pretty planar and it's finite, right? You can only work as big as your wall is. And I think Miro takes the title there, um, although the, the wall is infinite, right? Um, but this is kind of something that I th think is really interesting. Like you can bring all your stuff with you, pack it up, it's mobile, um, and then you can decide not to put something in that toolbox and you can decide to take someone else's tool and bring it into the toolbox. And that really was what resonated with us. Like we are like this kind of tool chest, this environment that you can bring things into and continue your workflow. And when you bring landing pad, you get this level of uh, management and um, confidence in how you're structuring your work, right? So this is how we saw it, right? It, but everyone that's built a tool knows that when you build a tool, it's the user of the tool that determines what that tool is for. And so what you all are doing is turning Gravity Sketch, Landing Pad, and the collaboration experiences into your workshops. You have versions of, upon versions in a single room and crashing the headsets. And you have uh, folks coming in and out of sessions, contributing, taking stuff out. And this has been really exciting to see. And when it comes to our customers, it's kind of no different. They're more using it like their studio. So this is an automotive design studio where you'll have a clay model, you have images in the background. And uh, this is exactly how a lot of the rooms that you saw during the past two days of around um, the virtual rooms looked. And this is really interesting because this is a, a really big shift in this industry. If you think about it, they've been operating like this for decades. And so we're starting to see folks working truly remotely and bringing this type of experience and amplifying this experience in the, in the virtual environment. And so we're extremely humbled for the fact that you guys really met us where we want to take you in terms of creating a tool and then you know having your organization system with it with landing pad, but actually pushing us into the realm of this is actually your virtual studio now. And we're gonna rise to that challenge through the work that we're doing over the course of the next couple of years here. And this is a, a really good one because this is the image that we made in 2016 and it really does call back to that virtual studio. And so it's kind of, it's kind of strange that we didn't quite lean into that so early on. Um, but what I love about this image is that this is a very rough sketch. This is from James Robbins. It's super rough, loose sketch. And the message that we were trying to communicate here is that first you have like this kind of cross-platform experience. People can be in any place in the world, but also you can get into uh, review super early on when things are really rough and you can kind of streamline that communication so you don't get feedback when you're like kind of too far down the road. And yeah, I, I'm so pleased to see companies using Gravity Sketch in this way today and many teams that are working through our community product working this way as well. And we have users and customers across multi-different industries and this has been really exciting. So footwear and apparel have obviously been 
the bedrock, but we're starting to see broader industrial design applications in aerospace. But this is where we get our, our, our feedback from how we build the enterprise product or how we build for a professional user. So we mix it with you guys, the community, as well as our customers, as well as our student ambassadors who have gone to many of these companies. And we continue that learning experience, that learning journey. We took the vision to a certain point and to, to take it to that next step, we really got to work together. So this is what's happening in many of the organizations. I'm going to kind of switch into gravity sketch for business mode for a second here. And I imagine this applies to a lot of you freelancers as well. The designer is the nucleus. The designer is starting the or initiating the project. I'm sure they get a marketing brief and so forth, but it isn't until you get a, an iteration or a sketch or something like that, that you kind of kickstart that project. Immediately after we have something as designers, we then need to communicate it to the next layer of the organization. And this layer is gonna help you bring it to uh, at least its first iteration. But from there, you're also responsible to communicate even wider, right? To retail partners, manufacturing partners, the designer really has to communicate to every level level of the organization what the design intent and the design vision is. And that's where our vision for our product also aligns. We've got to build enough tools that help you express that idea and communicate it from a creative perspective, but also need to bring, build a layer of communication let you take it to each layer of the organization that's relying on you to communicate that idea. And again, these are ideas that have yet to be materialized. So they're all going to be kind of ephemeral in many people's minds if you can't bring it to a certain level of resolution. So at Gravity Sketch, we're, our North Star is focusing in on the number of ideas shared. And what that means, because we can't with confidence say that you've actually shared an idea or not, what that means in practice is we're monitoring the number of downloads that you make. So how many downloads are people taking out of landing pad? How many shares are you making via landing pad? How many collab sessions are happening? These are all great indications that you guys are sharing ideas and that our, we're doing our job well. Of course, these sessions like uh, across around that we've been having are also great indications. So there's the kind of the community pulse, which we'll talk about later, but this is kind of how we're measuring the success of our business. And we imagine this future where sharing an idea is the same as sharing an image from your phone. And so we can try to work towards that. And I think the technology landscape is going to change where everything is online. Um, you don't have to really rely on the power of the headset and we will have to see some new I guess some new um, Wi-Fi technology or, or some sort of new frequency coming out that allows us to do that, as well as the, the GPU, cloud GPU technology coming to market as well. And I envision a future where you'll just have a, a really high resolution display and a, a receiver and a, a very elegant headset. And so you can just spin up the hardware when you need it, share your content freely with anyone, and then spin down. So it's a it's a big a big vision, but we're going to work towards this level of vision here, sharing freely at your fingertips across any device or any um, any experience that you, your your colleagues need to receive that information. So in an organization, this is often what happens: uh, a new idea or a new process is adopted, and stakeholders expect everything to just change overnight. And like already, we're hitting this level of performance that's like peak. Um, but what really happens is you have a bit of a dip because you need to learn something. You need to take some time out. And so your performance goes down a bit. But if you allow for that, you can get this to this exceptional level of performance, not just the desired level of performance. And we call that period the period disruption. And for some companies, that period can be six months to a year. For others that really lean in and, and delegate and dedicate time, um, it could be quite, quite significantly um, shorter. But what the problem we have is that often we get this little dashed line here. And this is where people get scared and they jump out of something when they, that, that productivity is going down. And so this is also applying for any of you that are looking at adopting any new 3D technology. You know, it, this, don't get scared too fast. You know, let yourself get through that period of disruption and feel the advertised impact. Because if you don't do that, you just look at it as time wasted. And there's been so many times I've gone to one of our customers or I've speaking, spoken with a power user in the community and said, yeah, I tried that a few years ago, um, but you know, it just never really clicked with me. I was like, well, well, how long do you try it for? Oh, I just tried it on like, on like a, a practice project. And it's like, well, you kind of got to lean in all the way. And so I encourage all of you out there watching, like go through that period of disruption with excitement and curiosity so you can get to the advertised impact, but ultimately you can get to the, the, the place of real tangible benefit. And our approach is to make this a lot easier as a company. Um, we've been dabbling a lot with the screens and like how you can communicate with VR from the screen or 
you know, how you could sketch on the iPad and then bring into VR. And our goal is to have this kind of methodology where Gravity Sketch becomes an ecosystem with landing pad as opposed to it's a great VR creation tool or it's a great iPad sketching tool or it's like this is screen applications, how I view things on the screen. And so how do we build all this together so it plays nicely? And we've experimented with this a ton, right? So if you guys have been following us since 2016, we've been iterating on how you sketch on the screen for some time now, as well as how you collaborate from the screen. And our goal is to bring all those experiences into one. And this is what we're focusing on over the course of next year. Have one unified experience from the screen. Of course, there'll be different roles, or maybe you'll have a, a way of get, granting someone access to something or, or restricting access to something, but no longer having all these disparate parts of different experiences. And we're dedicated to making that feel fluid and as close as possible when it comes to the, I guess, the homogeny of the whole experience to VR. Of course, we can never make something that's flat stereoscopic, but we can we could try our best to make these experiences feel seamless. So what our business looks like today? Well, we have enough money to get us through two years, so that's great. We're, uh, we're funded for the next two years. And in startup world, that's a, that's a thumbs up, especially with all that's been going on in the market. Um, our customers have grown really uh, incredibly. So we have uh, customers that are multi-million dollar accounts now with hundreds of deployments of Gravity Sketch in terms of hundreds of users using it and working on projects that you've seen over the past two days that are obviously winning World Cups. So it's been a, a really exciting journey there. And so far, we've been getting amazing reviews. Of course, we have a, a few things that we need to work on as a business. And I really appreciate everyone that has given us those reviews that are, hey, this is great, but you guys need to do this better. Um, but ultimately, everyone that's been experiencing the product has really resonated with it. And you guys have given us the right type of input so we can continue building. And what great looks like to us is not just the financial side, it's not just the customer side, it's not just the reviews, it's us working together with you and our customers. Like, how do we work closer? Right now, you guys give us great feedback on Discord, but I'd love for us to get to a place where it's a little bit more structured. We could actually start working against some of these initiatives and we can crowdsource and really measure what is, what is the next big step for our business? What's the next milestone that helps you all unlock that level of creativity and communication that you're desiring? Um, more of these success stories. I kind of got to scour YouTube or I got to scour Instagram to find out like where people are making some amazing um, success using the product or using the product in conjunction with other tools. But I love to find a way that we can bring those success stories in one unified place that helps everyone else learn from each other. And then ultimately, in the spirit of learning, this is why we're here at Around. So customers, community, seamlessly sharing with each other. The round is the great place for us, for us to do that. I would love to turn around into maybe um, just a, 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 an ongoing thing. So this annual event is kind of a crescendo of all the different experiences that we're sharing, all the different learnings that we're sharing along that, along that path. Um, so at the product level, I'm sure everyone wants to know what we're doing on the product level. Um, 6.0 was a really big release for us. We started doing things like um, a brush library where you can kind of align up or preset all the different strokes and conditions of your strokes. We moved color to a more accessible place for you. It was on a button dedicated, which would arguably is really accessible, but it kind of blocked out your whole experience. And then we started to add precision tools or precision movement tools and this new tool shelf where the tool belt has been in beta for years. So we tried to really write a love letter to you all and listen to your feedback and put it into practice. And we're doing that same thing with 6.1. and. 6.1 and 6.0 will both have uh, enhanced AR collaboration. We're, we're hoping to do a little bit more in this space and make this something that is as seamless as possible. Working with the hardware manufacturers so we can have better co-located experiences as well, uh, but also remote located experiences. So there's, there's a lot that we can still do here in the AR collaboration, but this has been an enormous success for our community and customers. And with 6.1, again, we're hearing you guys, some of our shaders aren't to a certain level or quality that you wish. So we've been looking at Unity's URP, Universal Rendering Pipeline, and we're deploying that. So everything in Gravity Sketch should look seamless and the same across all the different devices. And of course, one of the things that we've been hearing a lot of is bring shadows. So we're going to bring shadows to the Quest. Uh, of course, I think you got to have to be realistic with us. Like Quest 1 probably is not going to handle it, but Quest two, quest 3 certainly will handle it. And with the shadows and the pass-through and the mixed reality mode, it's it's actually pretty compelling, especially if you put the light exactly where the light source is. So, you know, we're getting closer and closer to that vision of creating directly in front of you, that, that Pablo Picasso vision. Um, 
we can't really do this without you. I've been talking to you the whole time. Gravity Sketch really was built alongside of you. Um, from the earliest days, we were observing how creatives were creating in their workshops. We were testing Gravity Sketch when it was in beta. Um, even before it was in beta, it was on this one machine in our in our studio, and we would have to lug that machine around London to test it with creatives. And we want to do this. We want to amplify this. And so much so, I, I feel like we're at the right point in the business where we need to bring someone that's dedicated to helping us have that conversation with you all. Um, and also just bringing you guys closer and structuring our communication in a way that gives you guys more trust and confidence that we're going to build a great product to last for the next 10, 20 years. So with that, I want to welcome our new community lead, Dan Cocking, who've, who's been behind the scenes helping support this whole around festival for the past couple of days now. Um, I'm going to welcome Dan. And Dan, feel free to give a little introduction to yourself. Um, you come from the industry as well. And yeah, what, what you've been learning along the journey so far. Absolutely. Thank you, Shay. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, it's, it's great to meet all of you at a festival uh, that is as amazing uh, as this. Um, so yeah, my name is Dan and um, I'm passionate about this community because I guess I come from the community, you know. Uh, I come from a footwear background and uh, what excites me is helping people bring ideas to reality. And uh, I started doing that uh, in Adidas many, many years ago. Uh, in, in China, Adidas Innovation in China, and my role was to to make uh, physical samples out of ideas. So it's the same thing as what we're doing today. I did this for Adidas Performance as well for many years. I worked with many of the people that you've seen today, uh, Ryan, Thomas, Tom, uh, Nico, uh, Angus and Richard, who you'll, who you'll uh, meet in the next couple of sessions. Um, and I say this to convey that I, I truly understand the struggle of communicating in 3D, but also the impact that we can all have if we're able to master it. And uh, I should also say that all this time on the side, I was building a design community called Lace Lists to inspire, empower, and connect footwear creatives. And what I've seen is that Gravity Sketch and 3D design technologies has really, truly taken over my former industry, uh, which is why I'm here. Um, so on, on, on the next slide, this is what I really love. <clears throat> like we are a diverse global community in the fields of transportation, footwear, apparel, uh, and industrial design. But we also host scientists, engineers, medical doctors, and more. Um, but we're all not here representing an industry. Everyone is, is, is here with a shared interest in just trying to communicate 3D ideas, which is truly amazing. And on, on the next slide there, um, you might come from uh, a world that's completely 2D, whether it be analog uh, 2D or digital 2D, or some of you might be deep in, in 3D with precision tools, uh, working on some game-changing engineering solutions. But when we position our community, this is what we're talking about. And really, if you look around, that's this room here. That's everybody on, uh, in, uh, that everybody that's coming to around. And whilst Gravity Sketch can serve many of you in these fields, my focus is not only on Gravity Sketch users, it's the wider community. Uh, some of you guys might be deep into Gravity Sketch, clocking hundreds of hours, uh, or you might never have touched it or touched a headset. But we want to serve you because we believe in the 3D space uh, and want to serve anybody that, that touches that space. Like we've grown. Um, that's what we've seen over, over, over the last few years. Our community has constantly grown. Um, we've seen from our Instagram uh, growth that it's constantly in discovery mode. This is where we typically post things to get people inspired. And uh, so it's a, a good um, sense check that people are there to discover. We've also seen that the, the community is eager to learn. YouTube is our place where you'll find tutorials, quick tips, and connect with industry experts and webinars. and and you know, this year you've watched, watched over 60,000 hours of, of content around that. Uh, and perhaps even more powerfully, we're eager to come together as a community, connect with each other, grow with one another. And this year, the, the number as of now is, is about 6,700 registrants to around. Isn't that amazing, right? 6,700 people all connecting around this uh, topic of 3D uh, because we all care about it. Um, so yeah, many of us know, uh, many of you know us for transportation, footwear, apparel, and industrial design industries. But 
as I've dug deeper, and, and, and that's the pri privilege that I get in my role, as I've dug deeper, there's so much more to it. The scientists, engineers, medical doctors doing really incredible things. And I just want to show you a couple of examples of that. Does anybody recognize this slide here? Um, my mind was blown when I saw the work of uh, Ludwig Ling and uh, Ling Li from the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. If you didn't get a chance to meet them yesterday in the Wander Around sessions, you really need to ping them and catch up with them and, and uh, uh, see what they're doing and stretching the boundaries. This is one of their pieces of work, which is amazing. Uh, on, on the next slide, this was incredible. I saw this in a webinar. Uh, Kristen uh, Lees is a structural geologist. She studies the complex structures within the earth at a molecular level. Uh, and this video is just showing the study of water, snow, and ice molecules, um, as I said, from a webinar from last year. Like these structures are incredibly complex and sometimes two dimensions just doesn't cut it. So she's been using a uh, gravity sketch to visualize, understand and communicate these. Um, and the next one is, you know, we're seeing you guys come together, which is truly amazing for me as a community lead. That's exactly what I want to see. And um, the video behind shows, shows a time where a number of power users came together for some world building. But I also want to make a shout out to the, the metaverse artisans. If you're not following them, give them a follow. It's a super group of uh, virtual reality artists who are doing amazing things. So Ben, Cuba, and so many others are all coming together on the platform to collaborate. And as a community lead, that's exactly what I want to encourage and do whatever I can to help you guys with. And uh, in this one here, um, we're seeing so many people come together. Uh, if you're, sorry, uh, we're seeing, um, if you're not following Nick Gravely, uh, you, you absolutely have to. He's one of many people coming together, taking advantage of the great new hardware uh, that's coming out from Meta, uh, allowing you to design at scale in a really natural way. So coming from a product background, when I see this, I get really excited about the, the future of product design. And then finally, I just had to throw this one on because I think it's really quite impactful. You know, this is from the Center of Biomedical Visualization in Granada. They're scanning 3D parts of human anatomy for training for medical students. And these immersive experiences help to simulate and practice operations. Like human bodies are complex, obviously, and, and Gravity Sketch has become the unlock for that. It's mind blowing to me that I join a company through the lens of design, thinking I'm coming to a design software through the lens of design, but I witness a community that are truly stretching its use case in such powerful ways. Um, and Gravity Sketch, as Shay said, is built alongside the community. I think that's what makes it great. And this is why we ask the community what community looks like to them. Uh, and when I quiz you guys uh, on, on the Instagram, uh, we see repeating patterns when we reach out. I want a place to collab. I want a place to be inspired by other creatives. I want access to tut tutorials. No matter how we cut it, the reoccurrence of uh, the reoccurring themes of discovering, learning, and connecting are there. And so, in the next few slides, like I really want your your uh, your uh, input, because as I said, Gravity Sketch is built alongside the community. And listen, like I'm new, I'm eager to learn. I've got a few slides to share what we're focusing on, but I really need your help into how. The first one here is our sleeping giant. Uh, Shay mentioned it before. Um, on the next slide there, Shay. Uh, this was a platform that was used in the early days of Gravity Sketch, still is primarily for, for uh, but it's become a little bit primarily for, uh, for product support, but it can be so much more. And uh, like in the future, it could be used for, uh, inspiration or more community-driven product support uh, might be used for more community-driven collab initiatives or public or private betas or, or even competitions. But really what I want to know is if we want to invest in Discord, how do you use it? And I would love the, the chat to be blowing up with uh, thought starters or um, ideas on how we can best use gravity, uh, use Discord for you. Um, the next one here is, is creating an environment to share ideas. And the next slide here, Shay. Um, our community is creating assets 
every single day. And she shared um, earlier that we want to really invest in, in unlocking you guys, sharing ideas. So it's really time to amplify this creative, creative energy. So I want you to imagine ways that we can be encouraging you to share, collaborate, and build off each other's uh, creations. We want to better your starting point, connecting the community and, and, and ultimately allow you guys to build better products. So the question to you guys is, like, what would encourage you guys to bring your idea outside of uh, your landing pad, gravity sketch, your workflows, um, and, and, and get it out there and start collaborating and sharing? So let's make uh, yeah gravity sketch a place that we can get ideas to converge. Um, and wrapping this up, um, we 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 want to recognize you guys uh, along the way. On the next slide, share I go a little bit in, into deep depth here. We could be introducing uh, community certifications. You could be achieving badges, titles, and levels based on your contributions to each other. Um, we could be giving you a platform to create structured progression, whether you be a novice or enthusiast or ambassador, unlocking features and privileges and the access along the way. So the question to you guys, and again, put your suggestions in the chat, is, is what do you love about the Gravity Sketch community and what, what are other communities doing um, that, that are great examples uh, of, of how to recognize you guys? So in, in the next slide... So there's one yeah, here, on. then it would be awesome to talk and collaborate with people right inside of Discord. Is there a way to create a collaboration link in Discord? Like a voice channel? Some oh, other the, people the, are saying that they, didn't, they went into Discord and they didn't get a hang of it. Yeah, absolutely. Discord can be, uh, you know, uh, on the surface, a challenging uh, um, platform to get hold of. Um, but it's really got a lot of functionalities. And I think it's up to us as a community team to really like unlock and simplify and break down. And listen, we're not going to um, put a, a use case uh, on, on something where it, the community is not feeling it's right. We would take the community's lead on how they use different platforms. And this is exactly the conversation I think we, we want to now begin. It's like we would love to open out now uh, a little conversation with you guys. So there's questions or suggestions on how the community um, can uh, can grow in better ways. Like, please do like, uh, I don't know if there's, I don't have eyes on the chat at the moment, but um, please do, let's, let's talk about it now. Let's define this together. Yeah, and you have the whole attention of, uh, of all of us here on the stage. So happy to start getting into a conversation mode as soon as possible. Oh, uh, this is a nice idea from Silas. Over the year, it, I'd be motivated to be on Discord more for occasional demos and discussions like we've seen the last two days. That's an interesting mm, one. That is a good one. Now, is it, also, I want to know, if there, is there other platforms? Because I know that a lot of people were introduced to Discord primarily through MidJourney. Um, a lot of designers weren't really on Discord. Uh, Discord seems to be more of the gaming platform and a few other kind of sub-communities. But I'd love to learn a little bit more about like where were you having these conversations if you if you weren't having them on Discord, and if you are like where are you having them? I know Zillafeld's Discord is really mm -hmm. cool. I, I I kind of spy in that one quite a bit as well. But yeah, we want to figure out if is that the right platform. That's the first question. We're not going to ever deprecate it, but is that the one that we should lean all in? Um, YouTube channels, I sorry, YouTube chats only go so far. Um, obviously IG only goes so far as well. It's not really set up, uh, in the way that we would want to have like long threads where people can feed in. So yeah, just, just wanted to hear what, what, what are some good ones? Yeah. Slack is another one. We tried Slack for a little bit as well, especially with our beta, beta community. But I think people were getting the Slack fatigue <laughs> a bit with all the different channels and the way it's structured. And also because they use it for work as well. Um, some people were actually turning off the Slack channel. Um, I'd interested. Love to. In Sorry. oh, it's it's living because it, it keeps going up. But basically, uh, someone saying that uh, yeah, experiences inside of Gravity Sketch, like uh, spaces that we can share and like meet other people, galleries, and so on. Mm. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that is an initiative that we have. We have this gallery, but it's kind of hidden. So we've been working. Um, we're going to see like a new update on our asset library, and we're working on. Uh, at least for the time being, manually feeding stuff into our community content folder 
So hopefully, Dan, you can facilitate, you know, anyone that wants to share their content can maybe route it through Dan and then we can get it out there in that community folder. And that will be uncapped. Like any, you, anyone can kind of access those. Um, in the future, I do see an opportunity for us to have a place where you can you can upload it yourself and then it just needs to be ver validated or verified by by Dan and his team. And then we could put those out so that anyone can grab those. Uh, but that's still part of the landing pad ecosystem we need to build out. But it's 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 a it's an interesting it's an interesting challenge. There's one comment here. Why not landing pad? Stay in one platform you already have. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. I think from a technical investment perspective, that was one of the things that we we've been just trying to be very um, resourceful. It's like one of our company values. Um, we've been trying to be really resourceful with where we where we spend, and right now it's been really focused on building a really strong product and like servicing the community and our customers. And so like it hasn't really <laughs> given us the the luxury to to kind of spend a whole you know chat system and even user profiles, which is something I'm personally really passionate about is having like a user profile on landing pad where I can have my images and my you know my my link sorry my, my profile image and my link to like my Instagram and things like this. But yeah, we haven't really had that that bandwidth yet. We're still a pretty small company in a lot of respects. I know this event makes us look really, really big, and we have some really amazing creators in the space. But um, we've been operating as a as a proper funded company for the past five years, so you know, still, still on that journey to the to the true ten year mark, where um, hopefully a lot of this stuff is worked out. But the beauty of this conversation is that you guys can get it on the ground floor and have that influence. So definitely having something in landing pad natively is is something we, we definitely want to do, just about timing and when we do it. I also have curiosity over a couple of suggestions in there about Reddit uh, and um, how we can maybe utilize that. That's maybe an underutilized um, ability that we have at the moment too, because that really engages, as I said, the wider community that even outside of the people that's within Gravity Sketch, which I think is an interesting thought. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Reddit. There are some really cool threads in Reddit around like, VR design and creation, and I, I caught a lot of Gravity Sketch users there as well. I love this idea of having like this, um, like big screen has a, a lobby that's kind of public, public lobbies where, I guess, where people can like kind of hang out and meet. I love that. Yeah. There's another like it's it's a it's an interesting comment. Doing more projects, and it's from Joseph um, Trojan. Doing more projects like the one we did with Cami Studio, so like more collaborations like that with the community. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, it's it's been in in our kind of like thinking process there, so yeah, maybe doing more of that. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to kind of break down the, um, the the barriers there. Like like this conversation is is all about like unlocking that and giving a face to you guys to you know who can actually help you guys enable things. And so I'd like like if you guys have got ideas, like please like in this chat obviously, but like ideas like that specific product that you'd like to kind of get further along the line. And we're going to see what we can do. So please, please uh, reach out to me on that one. Yeah. And and those big projects like that, um, that was like a self-initiated project that we did internally. We met a, a really forward-thinking factory in Portugal. And um, Joey was just transitioning to becoming a solo designer or uh, a studio-based designer. And so it, it felt like a really good um, culmination of like, how do we foster a new way of working with this factory that really wants to accelerate their way of working into you know a, a fully digital one and joey who was looking at you know creating something that's almost un unmanufacturable to some degree so if we could start doing some of those iterations in the industries that we're getting a lot of uh, learnings from and traction in i think that would be an amazing way that we can not just like I think not just like make a great product and have a good talk about it, but like lay the foundation for a workflow that could work for that industry or could work for that specific way of manufacturing. Um, but we need some more hand raisers, right? Like we were working really close with Joey and talking with him even before that project initiated and, and that factory partner reached out to us as well. So we kind of saw this really perfect match of all the different faculties that would take to make that thing a reality. Um, with Nick, you he kind of already had the wheels moving on the furniture manufacturing, but on the you know his next two pieces, we want to be involved. So, you know, Nick, if you're watching, we want to 
when I get closer to like both ends of the spectrum, you know, how you're communicating with the factories. So maybe we get we get some examples there. And of course, our automotive customers were learning a lot, but a lot of that stuff can't be disclosed, which makes it a little bit challenging for us as well. So trying to find um, true initiatives that can be spread across the whole community and like you guys can all learn from is is top priority for us. And if you guys have any insights into fabrication partners or studios that are working in that capacity or want to collaborate in that level, like feel free to reach out. There's there's a few comments around hardware headsets, people not being able to find people like that they know that have a VR headset. Shay mentioned our kind of like our focus now on enabling a 2D screen side of things. But I think Shay would be great for you to talk a, li a little bit about, you know, like a lot of the questions about like, you know, developing our sketch for other types of headsets. Right. The question that keeps coming up, Vision Pro. But also like talking a little bit more maybe like uh, about the 2D and like how do we envision this allowing more people to join the Gravity Sketch experience. Yeah. Yeah, it goes back to the beginning of, of my presentation or my part of the presentation where we were talking about like everything starts with a sketch. Like that's our thesis. And for several years, you know, hundreds of years, at least industrial products have started with a sketch that was a gesture like this, right? And there was a reference plane to make that gesture. And in many of um, the companies and many of the professionals that we work with, they have like a beautiful sketching style. And they have to train themselves to convert that into 3D because you're almost breaking this like plane that you're used to working in. And so then you have to think about working spatially, like almost like working as a craftsman. And, you know, that's a different way of working. And so, you know, one of the things that we did early days in Gravity Sketch before VR was prevalent is Danielle and I were like, let's just make it on the iPad because at least we can allow someone to like quickly sketch a 3D line and then they can manipulate that line through the iPad. It's not gonna be as grandiose as having stereoscopic vision, but that will let them get one step further. And we're kind of coming full circle back to that because we've only dabbled in that. We've only ever given six months of work um, to this because our, our VR product and our, our customers requests for like security and so forth have always taken over. And so making it a real mandate of like, let's actually do this with landing pad and VR in mind from the onset so that the the pin on a Wacom tablet or the pencil on the iPad screen is no different than a VR controller in space. And what that might look like in workflow, and again, this is theoretical, I'm sure you all have opinions about how you might use this, but what this would look like is just another input device for you guys to engage with your creative space, your 3D creative space. So what that means is, side view of a car or a side view of a shoe you probably sketched dozens of no hundreds upon hundreds of those in your professional setting and you probably know that gesture so well that's like baked into your arm right so giving you that you do a side view jump into gravity sketch and in vr you pull it apart or maybe have the minimal layer of manipulation tools in the screen the challenge that we're going to face is how do we make this a beautiful experience we go back to our ux funnel like how do we make creation at the top very seamless very fun and you unlock the complexity as you move down or as you get more <clears throat> as you get more content into the into the screen that's a huge challenge i don't think any company has ever nailed it i, I mean every single cad tool i use has like four different ways of navigating right and and none of the, none of, there's no like uniform way of navigating it's like it's not left or right it's not center scroll it's like there's all these different ways and you know, we'll, we'll do our best to kind of iterate in that space. But again, this is where I can't stress enough. We need to lean on you guys. But we're hoping that the fact that it will be tied in to the ecosystem means that out of the box, you get VR compatibility. So you just put on your headset and you can get into VR. If you don't have VR, you also out of the box get collaboration compatibility. So you can just send a link to someone and they can then collaborate with you on that. So the vision is still, um, I would say, still rough in the sense of like, we're just going to give you another input into the ecosystem but it's all connected. But I like it that's rough like that because that gives us an, a window for you guys to help help us mold it into the right direction. In terms of like finding people that collaborate with, yeah, <laughs> you know, that that that's a big project. And one of the things I can kind of let the cat out of the bag is that we will be changing the way that we um, look at our files in the future. So right now we have a sketch and a collab room. Um, there's no reason why these two things shouldn't be the same. And so in the future, having just 
a shareable a share a sketch that's shared and a sketch that isn't shared. If I look at any document sharing platform on the web, it's either shared file or it's not a shared file. So that's a huge body of work that we're doing in the first half of next year. Um, hopefully rolling that out before the end of the year. So then any sketch automatically overnight becomes shareable. And that should give you um, a very clear way to to share content with someone. And also the sharing mechanisms, learning from games like the mini golf game where you could just give them a code and then you know your colleague or your peer can, can take that code and then they can join the room. Now that has some implications because obviously you don't want a, a code that's like 25 characters um, and you don't want the same same code for the same room. So there's still some learnings and some things we have to test out there, but those are the type of things that we're thinking in terms of encouraging more ideas shared and then also encouraging more people to get into the platform um, from like that kind of gestural creative experience that they would have on a, on a piece of paper. Something that I would really love to encourage the community to do is Yes, we're going to be organizing different things. We're like Dan is going to be, you know, doing so many like he's already had like all, like so many great ideas for getting the community together, getting them to collaborate, but it's your community, guys. Like also it's it's up to you to 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 get together, to find people. We've heard some examples of people for example last year at the round meeting each other at the table and they've been working the whole year in some projects. How do you scale that? How do you make it bigger? How do you start connecting with other like-minded individuals? It's really like, this is, it's not our community, it's your community. So how do you grow it? Help us do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the way I, I see that point as well, it's like um, I think the metaverse artisans are a great call out for that, right? Those guys are, are creating their own micro community around a similar, very similar passionate uh, passion around this topic. But we're going to throw fuel on the fire of things that you're already doing. Uh, and that for me is the way that we're going to be able to scale is by encouraging you guys to be, to be building and, and defining your own path. Yeah. All right. We have a few minutes left. So if you like Shay want to give some like parting words then as well, um, yeah, I just want to express my gratitude again. Um, I, of course, I thank the team that's running things in the background here in London, but also thank you all for showing up, for sharing, for even just registering. I know that some of you all, you all may not be able to stay up this late or wake up this early to watch, but it's it's great that you know, you're know you showing the support because we're going to continue to keep doing this together. And again, we didn't start this journey um, as like maybe the, the stereo, stereotypical like tech startup you know let's like let's make as much money as we can and buy you know you know uh, uh some sort of yacht or something like this you know we we really started this to have these kind of conversations and have this really amazing exposure to the way that you all are working and if i wasn't doing this i'd be designing and i think this is the only thing that keeps me from going back to a life in design is being so close to so many different amazing workflows and learning so much from you all so i i just have huge appreciation and it, it really does it, it really is the thing that gets me up every day and, and brings me in into the into the studio I, I think also from my my side i think what i love about this particular festival is it's it's a moment for us all to connect and that's what i'd want to encourage you guys to do is to take this opportunity that everybody in the chat they're all interested in the same thing uh, and you've got a common point already and we've I think we can all recollect a time or a person that's been transformative in our either personal or, or professional career. Uh, and this is the type of festival where those tra transformative conversations happen. So I'd encourage us to be connecting and, and chatting with one another. And the, the thing that um, pains me is that there's actually so many questions and good ideas in the chat that we haven't really got to and we're running out of time. So, I mean, I think it makes sense. I think um, Charmaine's just opened up a table uh, and uh, Shay, if I know Daniela, you need to run to the next session, but Shay, if you wouldn't mind joining us in that table and and we'll just sit in that table uh, open for a conversation uh, with, with with you guys, because as I say, we want to build this together. Uh, so anybody that yeah. wants to, please just come to the table. Yeah, let's have a, let's have a more intimate conversation. I'm happy to stick around. All right, well, Thank you everyone for jumping into this session. This is the session that we were 
looking the most forward to because you know it's 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 our moment to connect with you guys so hopefully you'll be able to continue the conversation with Che and then